song will be holy, holy, holy. Please rise. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, my dear lovely people of God. We are gathered again today to praise God and to honor him. Let us now present before him our petitions. We have all sinned against God. Let us solicit for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace, as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you, we make our prayers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. At the end of the 40 days, Noah opened the hatch he had made in the ark, and he sent out a raven to see if the waters had lessened on the earth. It flew back and forth until the waters dried off from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the waters had lessened on the earth. But the dove could find no place to alight and perch and it returned to him in the ark, for there was water all over the earth. Putting out his hand, he caught the dove and drew it back to him inside the ark. He waited seven days more and again sent the dove out from the ark. In the evening, the dove came back to him, and there in its bill was a plucked-off olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had lessened on the earth. He waited still another seven days and then released the dove once more, and this time it did not come back. In the 601st year of Noah's life, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the water began to dry up on the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was drying up. Noah built an altar to the Lord, and choosing from every clean animal and every clean bird, he offered burnt offerings on the altar. When the Lord smelled the sweet odor, he said to himself, Never again will I doom the earth because of man, 
since the desires of man's heart are evil from the start, nor will I ever again strike down all living beings as I have done. As long as the earth lasts, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. The word of the Lord. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. To the Lord I will offer a sacrifice of praise. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples arrived in Bethsaida, people brought to him a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Putting spittle on his eyes, he laid his hands on the man and asked, do you see anything? Looking out, the man replied, I see people looking like trees and walking. Then he laid hands on the man's eyes a second time and he saw clearly. His sight was restored and he could see everything distinctly. Then he sent him home and said, do not even go into the village. The gospel of the Lord Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ, both now and forever. Amen. My dear lovely people of God, this morning I want us to reflect on the theme, Noah's sacrifice. Noah's sacrifice. This is based on the first reading of today. Today, as we have heard, Noah offered sacrifice to God. God accepted his sacrifice and promised not to destroy the earth again. Here, my dear lovely ones, we have three points to reflect on. Number one, Noah offered sacrifice to the Lord. What do I mean by that? As an expression of gratitude to God for saving his life and his family by merit, Noah offered sacrifice befitting to God. From this singular action, we are also drawn to learn to be grateful to God always, no matter what or whatever 
we are undergoing. We must identify and acknowledge God's acts of love, of mercy, and goodness, which are all over us, and we must always be grateful of these. Number two, God was pleased with Noah's sacrifice. God was pleased with Noah's sacrifice for two reasons. The first reason was that God accepted the offerer first. That was Noah. Then the second reason, Noah offered to God the best that he had. What do you offer to God? Is it your best? Or the best of whatever you have? Noah showed us the example today. These two conditions are very salient, very essential for a sacrifice to be pleasing to God. God is interested not just in what is being offered, but who is offering it. God is also in, interested in, in who is offering the sacrifice. We must make an effort, therefore, to be pleasing to God. We must make ourselves pleasing to God. And then our gift can also be acceptable when we have made ourselves pleasing to God. Number three, God promised Noah not to destroy the world again. Dear ones, God delights in showing mercy. He prefers to redeem and restore rather than to destroy and punish. We see that manifested in today's gospel in the cure of a blind man. Jesus showed the blind man mercy. This is an expression of the mercy of God. Finally, my dear lovely people of God, we should not be so confident about God's mercy that we forget that God is also a just God. Let us always rely on the mercy and grace of God. God promises happiness for those who follow his law, seeking his happiness. Let us offer these prayers up to him. For the church, as she reveals God's hidden wisdom to us and teaches us his saving truths and mysteries, let us pray to the Lord. For renewed efforts to gain peace and stability within the human family of nations, let us pray to the Lord. For parents, teachers, and students who strive to, to hold on to the teachings of Christ in our schools, may they never waver from the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For sanctity of life, from conception to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have lost their lives in earthquake in Turkey this last week, for their families and their loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and are dying, for those who have died, for those whose names are written in the St. Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. And for the birthday of Fatima Hamid, whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord.
Father, help us to live according to our commandments and so become worthy of the blessings that we seek. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of my hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of my hands, to become for us a spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For through, for though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him, and has become a source of eternal salvation. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim. Lord, 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, our Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Edward and Bishop, Gregory Joseph the Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that we, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, First, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and God shall grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamp of God. Behold the lamp of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Those are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying our Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Immaculate Mary, your praises and sing. You reign down in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave,